Hello and welcome to this week's vlog which is all about things that I made in September. Well, mostly things I made in September. <laughs> I'm Amelia and this is So Amelia, my channel where I talk all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. I hope you'll enjoy today's video. I'm going to share a few things that I made for some blogs. So I did make them in August, but they weren't on the blog until September, so I'm going to share them with you now. And then a couple of things that I have finished making this month. This month our family has been struck by some very nasty gastro bugs. I won't go into details, you're welcome. But that has meant that the pace of sewing has slowed down rather a lot because obviously I've been unwell, my children have been unwell, my husband has been unwell. Um, I'm really hoping that we're at the end of it. It's been a good couple of weeks now and we're still in the midst of lots of nasty bugs. But anyway, enough about that. You're here for the sewing and I've got some lovely makes to share with you. So the first make I'm going to share with you is one that I sewed up for the lovely Felicity Fabrics ladies and that is over on their blog. So as with the fabrics and patterns and everything else I mentioned in this video, I'll pop a link to the blog below in the description box and do feel free to head over there and check out the blog because there will be more detail over there. When the lovely ladies of Felicity Fabrics contacted me about being a blogger for them, I was so excited to do that. They have the most beautiful range of fabrics over on the Felicity Fabrics website and I had such a lovely time browsing through and choosing something. Now this autumn I've been seeing quite a few tulle skirts in the ready to wear shops and so I thought it would be really good fun to have a go at making one of my own. Now as you'll know if you've watched my vlogs before, I am very strange in that I do not prefer an elasticated waist. So I much prefer a fitted waistband. I don't know why I don't prefer elastic, but there you have it. So I do prefer a fitted waistband and a lot of the tulle skirt patterns that I was seeing were self-drafted, which is brilliant, free patterns, even better. But I really wanted one that had a fitted waistband and therefore needed an invisible zip and all the rest of that. So I decided to get the Rebecca Page tulle skirt pattern. Now that comes in a great size range, extra small up to 5XL. Now that is a waist of 50 inches. So I have a waist of 30 inches. I fit into exactly the size medium and that is what I made and it fits beautifully. I was a bit worried during the construction process because it does look a bit big, but once it was all sewn up, it was the perfect fit. And here it is. Now I made it in this beautiful blue tulle from Felicity Fabrics, and it's very, very lovely and soft to wear. It's also quite drapey, which I think suits the skirt. Now you have a couple of options when you make this skirt. So you can make a slightly less full skirt with two layers of tulle, or you can make a full skirt with three layers of tulle. Now I decided I didn't want to be over tulled, so I went with two layers of tulle, which I think is perfect because I am a pear shape, and so I think too much tulle over my hips would have been too much tulle. So I did make the standard skirt with two layers of tulle, but that is a good seven meters because you have quite a lot of gathering up here into the waistband. So seven meters of tulle went into the skirt and I did add another panel into one of the, into the front skirt I think, just to try and use up all the tulle that I had. Now what I decided to do for the waistband, there are several options listed in the pattern, but I decided to use a contrast fabric because I just wanted something darker underneath this tulle to really pull out the beautiful colour of the tulle. So I went with this deep blue crushed taffeta that I bought from Minerva, and that also just helps to give a bit of structure and stability to the skirt, which I really, really like. It also helped when pushing in the invisible zip. Now I'm so proud of this. Can you spot the invisible zip? No, neither can I. <laughs> now this went in first try. I have to say, I think the layout of the instructions was a bit different in this pattern. There was a page where it was just simple instructions. So if you're an experienced sewist, you could just read those through and make it, which was quite nice actually because it didn't have all of the extra surplus information that sometimes you don't need if you've got the experience. However, I haven't sewn with tulle before, so I did want a bit more hand holding. So then there are pictures and really good instructions as part of the pattern, but I did find sometimes the language of them was a little bit tricky to follow, but that might just be because I'm new to this fabric. However, the instructions for the invisible zip I thought were fantastic. And I love the way that it just lines up here along the waistband. I'm so pleased with that. So the waistband is sewn right through those layers of tulle and onto the lining so that it makes a really neat finish on the inside. And then you can see the layers of tulle are then sewn together underneath that zip. Now, 
This was a construction that I definitely preferred. A lot of the self-drafted tulle skirts that I saw just left a real raw finished down here uh, around the zip if that's how they were closed. So I thought that this construction was really neat and you know how I love neat insides of garments so this made me really happy. So I would definitely say if you are a beginner you could definitely make this pattern. If you've never sewn an invisible zip before this would be a great place to start because the instructions are so good and actually this tulle fabric was so lovely to sew with. I had to do a bit of fiddling around at the beginning to get the tension right for sewing these bits of tulle together but after that it was plain sailing and I just think it makes for such a fun skirt. Now because I had a bit of this taffeta left over I couldn't help make a matching top. So here is the matching top that I made. Now it is the Stitch Witch Bathurst top. Now you'll know if you've been here before how much I love the Stitch Witch Atlas top. And because I love that pattern so much, I really wanted to give this one a try. Now you can see from the front, it's just a very simple front piece. There are two darts here at the side for shaping. And then it comes in two lengths, quite a, it's called super cropped or it comes at the waist. Now I did make the super cropped version because the skirt is fitted at the waist and I wanted that just to sit on top of the waistband piece here. So I did make the super cropped version and actually it's fine. So I made a slightly shorter hem on this and in actual fact I'm going to go back and turn it under and sew the original hem length because with the hem that I made it does come down a little bit further on the skirt than I would like. So if you've got a high-waisted garment underneath, the super cropped is fine in terms of length. The party for this one is at the back, so I'll turn around and show you. Now I've got a bra on my mannequin just so that it's padded out to my particular measurements, but obviously when I wear this one, you can't wear a bra. Now for me, that's not a problem, but those of you who don't prefer to go without a bra may not prefer this top, or I suppose you could wear it over a turtleneck or something in the winter. That would be quite fun. Now what I was concerned about was the security of this top in terms of it staying on and nothing being exposed that ought not to be exposed. But actually this shoulder piece comes in around the shoulders, so it actually sits quite high up on your neck. Uh, it's still very comfortable. And then these back pieces come together really nicely with this bow just at the waist on your back. Now I was really pleasantly surprised. I wore this out for a celebration with my family, a back to school celebration. It was very comfortable to wear. It was a lovely piece to pair with the skirt for a real celebration look. However, I did want to make sure that the skirt was going to be versatile in terms of wearing it throughout the seasons. And so you'll see from the pictures, I have styled it with cardigan and sneakers, but I could pair it with tights and boots and another cardigan in the winter months. So that's really fun that I can style this up in different ways and wear it throughout the seasons. It's probably not the one that I'll pick for the school run most mornings, but on the mornings when the children are at nursery and I'm meeting a friend for coffee, I might just pick this because it's just so much fun to wear. So the next thing I made were the Pietra shorts. Now because I made these in August, I did make the shorts version. I would like to make the trousers further on down the line because this pattern does come as wide leg trousers, tapered trousers and shorts. Closet core patterns on the whole are really inclusive. This pattern does come in an inclusive size range 0 to 20 and 14 to 32 which is up to a 63 inch hip which is fantastic. Now for me in closet core patterns my waist falls right between sizes 10 and 12 and my hips fall between sizes 12 and 14, which is a bit tricky in terms of choosing which size to make. So in the end, I did decide to make a size 12 at the waist, grading to a size 14 at the hip, because lots of things that I had read said that these shorts and trousers are quite tricky to pull up over your hips if you don't allow enough room in that area. Some people even go so far as to put an invisible zip in the side just to make sure that they can get in and out of these easily because this pattern is drafted with a beautiful flat front and lovely, lovely pockets and an elasticated back. Now I ought to say that I did sew this up for the Backstitch blog and more details about this are over there. So if you'd like to read about my make, I've listed the blog post in the description box below. Now I made these from a gorgeous peppered cotton it's called in an ink colorway and it's just such a lovely, lovely fabric and beautiful to work with as well. It cut out well, it pressed well, it sewed well, so I can definitely recommend that and they have a lot of different colours of this fabric over on the Backstitch blog and it's also very reasonably priced. So do go and take a look because I think this would be a great fabric to use for a pair of trousers in the winter as well. Now you can see these lovely slant pockets at the front, they're really nice and deep too. 
I did extend the length of these by two inches. Now in the front of the pattern booklet there's a brilliant section about which pieces you need to grade out if you're grading them out, which pieces you need to lengthen if you're lengthening them. So if you need a guide on that front, there are lots of instructions on the pattern about how to do that, which is fantastic. So the biggest change I made here was to take the elastic out of the back waistband. I don't like elastic in the back waistband, but I loved the shape and style of these shorts. So I have put some details over on the Backstitch blog about how I went about doing this, if you want to go and see to take the elastic out for yourself. But in essence, I did put in a couple of darts to take out the extra width in the back here, and I drafted a facing to go on the inside. And obviously, because you can't get in and out of them with no elastic, I put in an invisible zipper at the back. Now that did take a little bit of maths and head work to get right and if I'm being completely honest these are slightly too big and that is something that I've read about the closet core shorts. It's a real juggling act to get the hips and the waist just right. So what I'll do next time is I'll probably make the size 10 at the waist if I'm removing some of this fabric anyway because I'm not putting in the elastic there is fabric and space to play with those darts and so I can get the fit a bit closer to my waist. But in terms of a summer short, they fit really nicely because they're not overly tight, they're quite loose, and in this lovely light cotton fabric, they were really, really good in August when it was really hot. So those are the Pietra shorts, <laughs> and again, I just couldn't resist. I had fabric left over, so I did make a matching Stitch Witch Atlas top to go with it. <laughs> I'm not predictable at all, am I? So I lined that with an Ikea duvet cover, actually. I've made a dress for my daughter out of this fabric, and again, I had scraps left, so I used those for the lining of the top, which I think works really nicely. It's got the same blue in the background as the peppered cotton. I'm not going to talk about that in this vlog, because I have talked about the Atlas tops before. I'll put a link to the vlog in which I mention the other Atlas tops that I've made, because there's lots of details there about the size I chose and how I found that pattern, but that's what I chose to make to go with the shorts. Now, it's definitely not summer weather anymore, which is a real shame. It was so lovely and warm for such a long time this year, but I'm going to have a go at seeing if I can style these shorts up with some tights and boots and a cozy jumper so that I can get some more wear out of them through the autumn months because they're so, so comfortable and lovely and stylish to wear with this sort of slight A-line shape over your legs and thighs. So super happy with those and I'd love to work out a way to keep wearing them even though the weather is cooling down. So I am going to mention what I'm wearing today. I'm sure a lot of you have already guessed what the pattern is but I will mention this a little bit later on in the video. So the next thing I'm going to share is possibly my favorite thing that I've made this month and it is a little quilted jacket for my daughter. Now I'm just so thrilled with this one. It was so much fun to put together and I just love sewing for my children. It brings me so much joy and actually she loves wearing this. We went to the fabric shop together, she's only three, but she has a definite sense of style and she knows what she likes. So we went and she chose this lining fabric, which I just think is so much fun. Her favorite color is purple. And I had this gorgeous counter fabric that I got from India and I wanted to use the piece that I had with purple on the bottom. So she chose some purple floral for the lining, so much fun. And I used a dark, purple to bind these two together, which I think in the end has worked really well. I did have a lighter lilac colour, which I was also tossing up, whether I would use the dark or the light. Thank you for all of your comments on the last video when I mentioned this plan. A lot of you suggested going with the dark purple, and I think you were absolutely right, and I'm really pleased with the way this has turned out. So the pattern was a Simplicity 9485. Now, unfortunately, this comes in a really limited size range. It's only six months to four years. Now the only redeeming feature about that is that this pattern has a lot of different garments that you could make in the same pattern. So it does have, I think, it has a quilted vest, a quilted coat, a t-shirt, a pair of trousers and a skirt. So almost a capsule wardrobe in the one pattern. So that's great. So if you've got children or grandchildren that are in their age range, this is a super, super pattern because you could definitely kit them out for the year in this one pattern. However, not great for those of us who have older children because I really love the style of this coat with the curved seams at the front and the little pocket. So it's a shame that I can't make that for my older children as well. It's also a great little layer 
for this time of year and I'm sure in the spring as well. I just put some wadding in between the two fabrics to just make it that little bit warmer for these autumnal days. So what I did find, for those of you who've got older children that would like to make them a quilted jacket, is I found the Ikati Sam. Now that, again, looks like a unisex pattern. There's a few different coat options there, and I'm sure you could use quilted fabric or quilt your own fabric to make that coat. So I'll pop that in the description box below, because it's such a shame that this pattern doesn't have a bigger age range. I would definitely be sewing this for my older two, if that was a possibility, because it's just so cute. So the one good thing about this pattern is it was very accurate in terms of sizing. My little girl is, a, is age three. I made a size three because it did correspond to her measurements and it fits beautifully. Now she'll probably only fit into it this year, but that's fine because I'm thinking in the winter she could layer this up underneath a thicker coat if she needed an extra layer of warmth and we'll definitely get wear out of this through the spring and even possibly on those cooler summer evenings next year. My one other criticism about the pattern, other than the limited size range, is that there aren't instructions on how to finish the edges on the inside of the coat. So those seams here where the quilted panels meet but aren't finished or are left unfinished. Now obviously you can't overlock it if you've quilted the fabric because it's just too thick to get through the overlocker. I did like the way that they instructed you how to quilt the fabric. There was a pattern piece for a large rectangle which once you'd quilted there was enough room in that quilted panel to get all of the pieces for the coat out. So that was fantastic. But there was no instruction about how to finish off the inside of the coat. So as you'll see I used the same fabric to bind with bias binding the seams on the side and then I used just the contrast bias binding on the sleeve just so that it was neat and finished off in the inside. It is a children's coat and children are hard on their things and that's fine. I want this to be well loved and well worn but I don't want it to wear out because I didn't finish the insides properly and I think on children's garments that is especially important. So I used the bias binding around the outside and I also used the bias binding on the inside just to finish off those seams and make sure everything was secure. Okay, before I mention this, I'm briefly going to mention the Monroe to Suti turtleneck. Now, if you watched my last week's video, which was a day in my sewing life, you will have seen me getting this pattern made up in a day with bits of sewing here and there throughout my day as I went and did other things. So if you're interested in watching that video, do click the link and I'll pop a link up here. The Monroe to Suti cardigan comes in sizes extra extra small to extra extra large. So as you can see, this is a boxy shaped turtleneck the sleeves are more fitted, but there is a drop sleeve here, which gives you some room over the shoulder. So it is a lovely shape, but it is definitely quite loose and boxy fitting. So it's almost a bit more like a jumper than a turtleneck. It's a shape that I haven't worn very much, but I'm actually really enjoying it. And I've been wearing it with skinny jeans and boots tucked in, untucked. It's just a very casual and easy piece for me to wear on a school day when I'm picking up and dropping off children and playing at the park or caring for sick children as I have been over the last couple of weeks. It has featured heavily in my day-to-day -day wardrobe so I can see myself making a few more of these. I'd quite like to try and make one in a merino so that I've got a really nice warm base layer for the winter months, particularly when I cycle the children to school on one of those really, really frosty, cold mornings. Okay, and finally, I'm gonna share what I'm wearing today. And this is the new pattern from Tilly and the Buttons. It is the Marnie mini dress and blouse. What a beautiful pattern. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. It seems to be quite a Marmite pattern. You love it or you hate it, but I think it's gorgeous. Now it comes as a blouse or as a mini dress. And what I love about the pattern is that there are so many different options. So there is a ruffle collar. There are these ruffles over the sleeves. There are obviously the pleats or the tucks on the front and on the sleeves. And there are the two different lengths, the blouse or the mini dress. So I do love that about Tilly Buttons patterns. There are often a lot of variations that you can use. In fact, on their blog recently, they shared another 10 different ways that you could make the Marnie. So it really is quite a versatile pattern and I think it's lovely for the autumn and the winter. This was a bit of a wearable toile. I made this in a fabric that I bought from Planet Make It, which unfortunately isn't operating anymore. And I bought this in their closing down sale. It's a lovely, lovely viscose and I thought the color of it would work well for winter. I did make the mini dress version and I plan on styling this up with tights and boots in the winter months. Now you'll see I sewed this up with a neck ruffle and with the ruffles over the sleeves. Now it is a loose blousy fit so there are no zips or anything else, there's just a button loop at the back and a single button. 
which is lovely. It meant that it came together quite quickly because there weren't any tricky fixings or fastenings. Now you will notice that I have chosen to make a waist tie from the same fabric as the dress just to pull it in a little bit at the waist. Now I do like a blousey fit in the autumn and winter but this is pretty blousey and to be honest it did remind me a bit of the maternity dresses that I wore when I was pregnant with my three children and that time has passed and I'm ready to show people that I do actually have a waist so I prefer to wear it with this little waist tie. There's still lots of lovely fabric in the bottom of the dress to float around in in the winter and I really do love these sleeves. I think they're gathered quite lightly into the sleeve head and then they're fitted to about here and then you've got this lovely floaty sleeve at the bottom particularly in the viscose it's just really lovely and floaty and autumnal. So yes, I'm quite happy with this dress. I think if I was going to make the version with the pleats or the tucks then I would definitely make this from perhaps a cotton lawn because you want a fabric that's still going to give you that float and that drape but you want one that's also going to hold those tucks in place. So I have got plans to make this in a cotton lawn so do stay tuned for that and I think this one would work actually quite well in the summer you could just use this top sleeve pattern piece in order to make it with short sleeves or you could use a different sleeve altogether to make it with like a little puff sleeve so lots of variations and opportunities for hacking there which I also love about Tilly Button's patterns now the one criticism I do have about the pattern was that these sleeve ruffles were unlined so it had one layer of fabric which I suppose is fine if you're using a lighter coloured fabric but this fabric was definitely very dark on one side and quite light on the other and so when it flicked up you just saw white underneath and I didn't think that would look great so I'm kind of surprised that they didn't suggest this as an option on the pattern because I think it makes for a much neater finish I simply cut four of these ruffle pieces rather than just two so that I could sew them together and make a lined ruffle piece. So how I did that is very simple really. Instead of hemming the ruffle, I just sewed those two edges together, then flipped them out, and then worked with them as if they were one piece, following the rest of the instructions in the pattern. So very straightforward hack there, but I just think it gives it a neater finish. And yes, that would have been great if that was given as an option in the pattern, just to make that a little bit neater. So I hope you enjoyed seeing those garments that I've been making. I'd be really interested to hear about your makes this September. What have you been sewing for this transitional weather? Have you made a Marnie dress yet and how do you find it? Are you wearing it with a little waist tight like I am or are you wearing it loose and blousy? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So do share those in the comments below. I'm super excited because in a couple of weeks it is the knitting and stitching show here in London and I am hoping to get along to that. And I'm also hoping to sew up a new dress for the occasion. So do stay tuned for next week's video in which I'm hopefully going to share a really fun make that I'm working on to wear to the Knitting and Stitching show. So thank you so, so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed seeing those things that I've been making this month, even if there weren't that many. But we all had those months, ebbs and flows. I'm still really pleased with what I made and I know that these pieces, even though this was a wearable twirl, will have a firm place in my autumn wardrobe. So thanks again for watching, I hope you have a really happy week ahead filled with lots of lovely sewing and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye!